Hello, welcome to this physics lesson. This is the first lesson in a series about current electricity. That's electrical currents, voltage, resistance, all those things you want to learn about. And the first lesson is about charge and current. It's split into two parts. The first part is more qualitative, which means descriptive, and the second part is more quantitative, which means mathematical. So let's start part one. A quick recap, hopefully, of some information you already know about charge. There are two sorts of charge. We call them positive and negative. And an example of a positive charge is a proton. An example of a negative charge is an electron. And normally materials can become charged by gaining or losing electrons. They're either knocked off the outside of atoms or gained by atoms. One of the most important properties about charges is the force between them. Like charges, which means the same kind, both positive or both negative, like charges repel one another, but unlike charges, that's a positive and a negative, they attract one another, and that's very important. When we measure the amount of charge, for advanced work, we use the, the SI unit, the System International Unit of Charge, and it's called a Coulomb. Symbol is capital C. Now, if you've done some elementary physics, you may be used to thinking that an electron has a charge of minus one and a proton has a charge of plus one. Well, those are relative values. For more advanced work, we have to use units called the Coulomb. And we define something called the elementary charge, which has got a symbol small e. And the elementary charge is simply the charge on one proton. And in units of coulombs, the charge on one proton, e, is to three significant figures, 1.6 naught times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the charge on one proton. That's a figure that comes up over and over again. Eventually you'll learn it off by heart. You'll have used it so many times. The electron's charge is the same magnitude, but it's negative. So the charge on the electron is minus 1.6 naught times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs to three significant figures. We can ask if the charge on the proton is that amount, how many protons does it take to make up one coulomb? Well, we simply want to see how many 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19s there are in one coulomb. So it's a simple division of one divided by the elementary charge. And if we do the sum, it comes to just over 6 times 10 to the 18. And that's a 6 followed by 18 noughts. That's the number of protons it would take to make one coulomb of charge. When we do calculations using charge, we often use the symbol Q. And we can use a capital Q or a small q. You'll see both used. And we can write things like Q is 3.21 coulombs. The amount of charge is that number of coulombs. Q equals four, uh, 42 millicoulombs. Some examples of using the symbol for charge, which is Q. Let's move on to current. Current, in simple terms, electrical current, is the movement or flow of charge. Some people call current amperage because, as we'll see, it's measured in amps. But please do not call current amperage. This is a term used by non-physicists. So if you're maybe a welder, you might want to talk about amperage. But if you are a physicist, you will not use the word amperage. You will use the word current. And you need to know that current can flow through materials. Usually it's metals, copper wire, for example. But a current can flow through a vacuum. You can have a beam of electrons flowing through a vacuum. That's a current as well. It's simply a movement of charge. Let's look at what goes on inside a simple metal when a current is conducted. 
Now the large blobs here are meant to represent metal atoms. What happens in the metal is the atoms interact with one another in a way which allows the outer electrons, or some of them, to escape. And those outer electrons are then able to wander between all the other atoms. They're free to move. So if an electron escapes from an atom, the electron is negative, and the atom is missing one electron, it becomes positive. It's got a positive charge. So in fact, inside a lump of metal, we've got lots of positive metal atoms, ions, in a fixed position. Those atoms are fixed there, which is in a pattern determined by the crystal structure of the atom. Those atoms, sorry, crystal structure of the metal. And the atoms are fixed, but some of the electrons which have escaped are free to roam. We call those electrons conduction electrons, the ones which are able to move about between the atoms. If we connect one side of the metal to the positive side of a battery, and the other side of the metal to the negative side of the battery, it should be pretty clear what's going to happen. The electrons, they're free to move, they will drift towards the positive side. They're being repelled from the negative side and attracted to the positive side. So those electrons start flowing through the metal and we have a current. The positive charges, which are the atoms, remain fixed though. They are in a fixed structure. So the overall effect is a flow of negative charge through the metal. And terminology. Charge carriers is a term you'll come across, meaning whatever particles have charge and are moving, causing the current. The charge carriers are the particles which are moving, causing the current. In this case, it's simply electrons, but it doesn't always have to be electrons. Sometimes you'll hear the term conventional current, and this confuses people because the conventional current is a sort of imaginary current. It's a current which would flow from positive to negative if the charge carriers were themselves positive. So if you have a battery with one side positive and one side negative, we say that the conventional current flows from the positive to the negative. It's a current as if the charge carriers were themselves positive. If you've actually got real positive charge carriers, of course, the conventional current from positive to negative is the same as the real physical current. But in normal circuits where you're dealing with metals, the charge carriers are negative and they flow from the negative to the positive side. But we refer to this thing called conventional current as a current which is flowing from the positive to the negative, as if the charge carriers were positive. So, a little exercise for you. Here's about the simplest circuit you can put together, one cell and one bulb, some wires, and I would like you to tell me what the direction of the conventional current is. Is it going upward through that bulb? Or downwards through that bulb. I'm not asking about the electrons, I'm asking about the conventional current. So just pause the video and have a think. Okay, I hope you've thunk. The long line in the symbol for the cell means the positive side. The short line means the negative side. And we say the conventional current flows from positive to negative. So if you ever need to know the direction of the conventional current, you start at the positive and go around to get back to negative. If the charge carriers are negative, like electrons, of course, the charge carriers are actually moving in the opposite direction to this so-called conventional current. Let's talk about the size of a current. And I'll read this out. The magnitude or size of a current is how much charge passes a point per unit time, which is a kind of general expression, and it usually means per second. Some people call it the rate of flow of charge, how much charge passes somewhere each second. And here's a nice simple example. Suppose over a period of two seconds, 
10 coulombs of charge passes through this bulb. 10 coulombs passes through in 2 seconds. What do you think the current is? It's how much current, how much charge, I should say, passes per second. Well, 10 coulombs passes through in 2 seconds. The current is going to be, I hope you can see, it's 5 coulombs per second. All I had to do, uh, do is divide the 10 coulombs by the 2 seconds. So the current is 5 coulombs per second. And I could write it 5 c stroke s or 5 c s to the minus 1 means the same thing. But we usually write it as 5 a, which means 5 amps. The symbol for amp, capital A, is equivalent to saying coulombs per second. OK, the SI, System International Unit of Current, is proper name is an ampere, though people tend not to use the full name. It's usually abbreviated to amp, and that's a unit for measuring current. The symbol is a capital A. And an amp is equivalent to one coulomb per second. Very important. An amp is equivalent to one coulomb per second. For information, this is not actually the definition of the amp. The definition of the amp is achieved by considering the forces due to the magnetic effect between two wires. But that's outside the scope of this lesson. The definition of the amp is not a coulomb per second, but an amp is equivalent to a coulomb per second. And if you want to measure current, you use an ammeter. Please note it's not called an amp meter, A M P, it's called an ammeter, A M M E T E R. And the ammeter would be connected in series with whatever you want to measure the current through. There's your bulb, connect it in series with the ammeter, and the ammeter will measure whatever passes through the bulb. If we're doing calculations, we use the symbol I for current. So we could write something like I is 2.0 amps. I is 32.4 milliamps, which means 32.4 thousandths, 10 to the minus 3 amps. Okay, I is the symbol for current. Now, here's some formula. What we're going to do in part 2 of the lesson is look at these formula in more detail. Briefly, let me recap, let me go through them. Um, this is a basic one. Current is charge over time. That means the unit of current is coulombs divided by second. Coulombs for charge, S for seconds. We can represent it symbolically. I is Q over T. And there are some other formats which we'll talk about in part two. This formula, I is Q, uh, Q over T, can be rearranged to give the different things as subjects in the equation. Q is IT, or T is Q over I. We'll talk about these in more detail in part two. So, I hope to see you in part two when we'll look at the, the formulas and calculations and some graphs.